I'm going to show you something that is a lot better if you see it when you're dangling from rope. I'm going to tell you a bit about something that formed from the exoskeleton of microorganisms. I'm talking about chalk. Now, I'm going to abseil down this cliff and give you a different view of Thanet's chalk cliffs. Thanet has the longest continuous stretch of chalk cliffs in Britain, and it's important nationally and internationally. Thanet has 20% of the UK's and 13% of Europe's coastal chalk. Much chalk was deposited during the Cretaceous period, that's 145 million years ago. So if I remember rightly, those dinosaur films, it was Triassic, Jurassic and then Cretaceous. Chalk is a limestone deposit created as plankton, tiny marine organisms. Now, they, like us, have calcium in their bodies whilst living, and when they died, the calcium leached out and settled onto the sea floor and formed something called ooze. Over millennia, large deposits have formed, and as the seas recided, these chalk cliff deposits remained here, as these cliffs we see today, and down there is a very special part of the chalk known as the chalk reef and that is brilliant for wildlife down there. You can also see this flint band. The flint forms randomly in the chalk, but you can notice these bands, and these bands match up over the channel in France. Here at Pegwell, there are three main bands of flints, if, if you look closely. Now, flint is, is a hard, impermeable rock made of silica, and it's derived from the skeletons of sponges and other marine creatures. Flint's quite important, you know. Flint gave man fire and it gave man early tools as well. They used to crack flint to make axes and weapons. Now, that's a hard thing, the, 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 the flint, uh, but this chalk is a sedimentary rock and, and because it's formed of compressed sediment, it's also permeable and water can pass through it. Now, most of our coastline has a concrete promenade like this to protect the cliffs. Because chalk is sedimentary and it's porous, it can easily be eroded and weathered by the wind, rain and the waves, which means that chalk cliffs are often unstable. And, and it can lead it to have lots of uh, cliff falls, especially during the winter. And amongst all the chalk that falls, you can find many different types of fossils in the chalk, such as urchins and ammonites can be found. Early mankind actually used chalk for graffiti, much like we do today. But this chalk is different to what we use on blackboards. That stuff we use on blackboards is actually a similar product called gypsum, calcium sulfate. But this raw chalk here is calcium carbonate. So it's quite interesting really, our, our chalk cliffs. Now a lot of people growing up in Thanet, we kind of take the chalk cliffs for granted, but you know, they're pretty special and, and they're quite unique, these chalk cliffs. So um, hopefully you've got shine, I've shined a new light on it for you. Now, in October, that's the month I go out and I check on my nest sites I've got going on because the birds aren't there and I make sure they're safe, secure, ready for the winter. And some of this is done by rope, some by ladders. And if you've been interested to see what I've been doing today with ropes access, please don't get yourself a rope and harness and go out doing it. It is dangerous. I know what I'm doing, you know. Get yourself over to Revolution Skate Park at Broadstairs. I go there, they've got a climbing wall and they do all the ropes access stuff. It's brilliant. So get yourself over there if you're interested and then see where, see where it takes you from there. Thanks a lot, guys.